I've referenced it a lot in this channel over the past few videos. I do think Tesla is more competitive than they make themselves seem. Whenever they see another company beating them on some metric or coming up close to their market, they like putting their foot down and letting them know, hey, we've got stuff behind the scenes, we've got stuff prototyping that you have no idea is capable of, and because of that, I feel like Tesla must be well aware of Lucid Air and the fact that the CEO is the formal chief of design for the Model S and that the guy overseeing Lucid Air's production ramp is the same guy overseeing the Model 3 production ramp, so they're well aware of these numbers promising a 517 mile EPA estimated range. And because of that, I think Tesla might have a few tricks up their sleeve, and it mostly has to do with the Plaid Model S, okay? Now we have evidence from Elon saying on Twitter that the battery packs they're using in this tri-motor Model S is going to be larger than the 100 kilowatt hour battery packs they're using today, and in my opinion, that kind of opens up a question. Will Tesla be keeping around the long-range Model S in the performance Model S, or will they just go all in on Plaid and say, you know what, for the sake of simplicity and the fact that the Model S is turning more into a low-volume car, we're just gonna have one performance model that's tri-motor and that's it. It's definitely a possibility. I know that the Model S is really not their bread and butter moving forward, but Elon and Tesla as a whole seem to be very, very happy about the Model S finally reaching that 402 EPA estimated range. They're like, hey, we're the first ones to do it. Electric vehicles can have just as good a range as gas cars, and to remove that entirely seems odd. It doesn't seem like it would be in Tesla's character to say, well, we care more about performance with the Model S, so now we no longer sell a 400 mile range EV. The truth is, many times in the past, I have said that the Plaid powertrain has some type of energy efficiency breakthrough that allows for extremely good range, when in reality, I'm kind of an idiot. I don't know what I'm talking about a lot of the time, and a lot of you guys thankfully corrected me, letting me know that, hey, adding another motor really does help with performance performance in 0 to 60 times, and with the Cybertruck it helps with towing capacity, but it by no means results in significantly better range, because just like the single motor Model Y is going to have a much better range than the dual motor Model Y, adding that extra weight, adding that extra power draw doesn't necessarily help range that much. And for that reason, it's probably rightful to assume that the Plaid Model S is likely going to have a range pretty close to that of the Performance Model S, as in around the 350 mile department because efficiency is not the key here with the Plaid powertrain. It's mostly about performance, those acceleration times, and those top speeds. It's really not about getting the best extended range you can. It has a lot more to do with just pure torque and pure power, which is why, because Tesla is so proud of being able to say that the Model S starts with a 402 mile range, I think it makes sense for simplicity's sake to keep around the long range Model S just with its two motors alongside the Plaid Model S, and this one could be maybe a little bit cheaper, but still rock the larger battery pack they're planning on putting in the tri-motor Model S. That way you could still have killer range, if anything, better than range is today. And in my opinion, that sounds way more like Tesla's character, you know, hearing about Project Roadrunner and how this trial battery cell production of this new custom size with better energy density and better longevity, less degradation, and they're going to be building it not far from Fremont and probably implementing it into the Plaid Model S first. Makes sense to me that we could see a battery pack substantially larger than the 100 kilowatt hour packs we're seeing in the Model S and X today. And if that's the case, and they're able to fit a larger battery into the same car design with just two motors, that entry-level Model S will be sticking around, probably with a price jump, but this is where everything starts to tie back in together. They could beat the range of the Lucid Air. I do think Tesla cares more so about their competitors than they lead on. And I imagine Elon and everyone at the Tesla team being really, really frustrated that this other company, that's also another California startup that's not public or anything, but knowing they get to say, we have the best range of any EV yet, that's going to make their blood boil. And they're going to be like, hey, you know what? We've got some new generation cells. We've got vertical integration like no other. And if that's the case, all they really have to do in order to beat Lucid Air, again, we don't know exactly the battery size that Lucid is using, but my guess is that energy efficiency wise with Lucid's aerodynamic improvements, they're probably really, really close, if not dead center matching the Model S efficiency. But again, and the reason the 402 mile range of the Model S can't touch the 517 mile range of the Lucid Air is because their battery is probably much bigger. So if Tesla was just able to squeeze about a 20 to 30 percent larger battery pack into the Model S, then I think they have a chance at matching or exceeding Lucid Air's extreme range claims. And at first you may think 20 to 30 percent, that's way bigger, and this battery pack is already really huge. How could Tesla possibly stuff that much energy into their current design with the Model S? 
S. Well, keep in mind the Model S is still using more dated cell technology. It's not even using the 2170 cells that the Model 3 is using. And these battery packs in the Model S are still using modules, which in the third row Tesla podcast, Elon talked about how those modules originally, they put them in there so that they could replace individual parts of the battery, but they ended up never doing that. So he definitely seemed like there was some dated design techniques with the battery pack that they wanted to update and improve. And of course, hearing about Project Roadrunner and them developing their new cell with new energy breakthroughs with technology acquired from Maxwell and the dry electrodes, I think it's totally possible that using next generation battery technology, hopefully of course we hear more about on Battery Investor Day, could be used to bring a 130 kilowatt hour battery pack into that dual motor Model S and that way they can claim, hey, this one has insanely good range. And if the efficiencies stay at what they are today, that 30% increase in range on a 402 mile vehicle could easily push near the 520 mile mark. So it doesn't have to be beating Lucid by a long shot, but I still think Tesla likes knowing they have the best range EV on the market and having this battery pack, the same one they'd be putting in the Plaid Model S, which of course the range would not be 500 miles because three motors are consuming more power. They take a lot more weight. So the performance Model S, I'm essentially saying could get the tri-motor set up and that will have the insane zero to 60 times, the insane high speed. Basically Tesla can learn as much as they can from this tri-motor setup and prepare it for the Tesla Roadster. But then also they can prioritize a, you know, decent performance Model S. It's by no means slow, but that updated battery pack going inside it for the sake of manufacturing efficiencies, you know, they don't want to be building one battery for one Model S and a different battery for a different Model S. In fact, they used to have a standard range cheaper Model S and then just decided, you know what, Model S is not as popular as the Model 3 is going to be, so they just scrapped it. And now every Model S comes with a 100 kilowatt hour battery pack. One just has more emphasis on performance and the other one just has more emphasis on efficiency. So I think keeping that alive with the launch of the Plaid Model S would be really interesting to see. And I'm basically just in favor of EV companies competing with each other. How good can the range get? Because at the end of the day, that just means us, the end consumer, results in a better product. We want competition. We want companies going up against each other and seeing how far can we get our EV. And yeah, at the end of the day, you're not going to get your EP estimated range. So I'm well aware 500 miles probably going to look more like 400, but that's still pretty good. I know it's a whole lot of speculation, but that's what you should expect when watching Talos of EV in the first place. Let me know what you guys think of my ideas by hitting me up over on Twitter, join my Discord. Let's chat more about it over there. Thank you all for watching. Hope you have an excellent rest of your day. Take care.